of New Hampshire are going to be active. Uh, and that's the case for a lot of a lot of people who've moved here. And that's also true of pro-liberty organizations outside of New Hampshire. They've done things here in New Hampshire that they probably would not have done otherwise. So we've actually incentivized not just individuals here to be active, but also organizations outside of New, ha New Hampshire to come and uh, pursue legislation or do educational outreach or a gazillion other things. Uh, and so that's been incredibly effective. And, and Jason alluded to there was a, at least seven figures, uh, maybe approaching eight of local. Um, you, you could make the case, and I forget which budget session it was, 08 or 10, something like that. There were a number of free staters in the House of Representatives. Well, there are now, but there were then. You could make the case that they were instrumental. I don't know if they made the difference, and it may be that they did, but, but the budget debate that year was very interesting, the, the state budget debate. Um, and it was a cut, and it was an actual cut. Usually on TV you hear about a cut, and what they mean is we're going to raise the budget less than our previous fantastic projection. So one fewer unicorns or whatever it is that they're saying that they're going to do. This was an actual cut. This session was X dollars. The next one is going to be X minus something or another. And the argument was over how big the minus was going to be. It turned out to be almost a billion dollars, 900 something million, I think is what it was. And the argument was over, should it be minus 11% or minus 14%? I don't remember the exact numbers, but something like that. And, uh, and the concern was, that if we don't make it minus big enough, we won't get the votes of the free staters and other libertarians. So if there's maybe, let's say, a dozen free staters at the time, there's probably 40 or so libertarians together, they would make a pretty significant voting block. If we don't cut the budget enough, they won't vote for it and it'll fail. Now, I'm not aware of that kind of rhetoric happening in like any state legislature ever. It's not even happened here in New Hampshire since World War II. So that's a pretty significant, I mean, if nothing else, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars of, of spending thus tax savings. That's a pretty significant effect for a $60,000 a year budget. In the back. Yeah, so the question is, has the Free State Project uh, done any estimation about children? We count adults, participants. We ask, I don't know that it's enforced actually, but we ask that you be an adult to sign up as a Free State Project participant. But for example, in our case, we moved from California. We had two children. They're now teenagers. Many people move with families where the kids were not Free Staters, uh, but their kids are growing up here. And what's the impact of that? Uh, I don't think we've done any formal research, right? No idea, really. I mean, anecdotally, I will say that uh, education is an enormously important thing. I, from my personal experience, just to diverge a little bit with my story, I grew up in a highly unusual household. That is, one in California, with parents that were fairly libertarian. So that's about point zero 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 something something zero percent of the population in California. Um, and growing up in that in that environment helped me learn as I was as I was being raised kind of how to think more clearly and think specifically about politics uh, policy issues and so on and so forth um, that has obviously impacted my life and of course I review those things that I've learned to, to check for errors and whatnot but um, but that's been instrumental so now there are not just there's not just me and I have an older brother but there are dozens or hundreds, we don't even know the number of children who have come along with their parents or been born, and in our case we've had two since we moved here, been born here. Um, and so they'll grow up with a different perspective than they would in New York or California or Connecticut or someplace like that. Um, not simply taking government for granted, but reevaluating what should it look like rather than what does it look like. And I hope that that will produce maybe a, a brighter future. Education is, is very, very important, and that's why we kind of take that personally, uh, prioritize it at a high level. Do you have anything to add? No, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, if, we, if you look at our events, there are certainly a lot of kids running around, so you, you might say double the number of, of free students. So that would be a rough guess as to, you know, if you include the whole family size. Mark? When I 
signed up for the Free State Project, what I was thinking to myself was is if we could get enough liberty-oriented people in one particular state, that there might be, um, you know, that we would be able to influence locals in order to get uh, liberty-oriented people, libertarians, into office on a state level. And if you could get enough of them in there, that essentially that you could um, arrest the growth, the growth of government. And that in and of itself, for me, when I was thinking about deciding whether or not I'm going to sign, and it took me you know, some amount of time to make that decision, this was what pushed me over the edge, was the simple fact that um, organizations tend to grow. Uh, monopoly organizations uh, have little limits on their growth. Um, at this point, it's just, a, it's just competition between federal, state, and local governments as to where they get to grow, um, into which spaces. So with um, a, you know, a group of libertarians in what is supposed to be the most powerful organization in the United States, a state, um, that was simply arresting growth to some extent, or slowing growth, I should say, um, that that would in and of itself bring freedom in a comparative sense in what is supposed to be one of the freest countries. I don't know how to summarize that question. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know what, uh, if, if that's being marketed, that, that sort of the aspect that we have reached that and reached it some time ago, many uh, a few years ago, that we had reached that point. If that's being marketed in any way, um, so is it, is it being promoted or marketed by the Free State Project that we've reached a threshold where um, free staters combined with sympathetic uh, natives or free staters or whatever you want to call them um, are able to influence policy enough at least to stop or significantly slow the growth of government uh, relative to other states? Is that kind of the idea? Yeah. Is that being promoted? Uh, it's not being promoted, it ought to be, um, and one reason to be optimistic is that it, even if all we do is stop the growth of government, the private sector keeps chugging on, right? There are always new innovations. Think about Uber and smartphones and, you know, Airbnb and things like that. These are areas where the private market has grown that are not regulated yet. So if all you do is you stop the growth of regulation, you get this permissionless innovation that's always happening, and over time, the, the share of the economy that's regulated shrinks, and, and we end up with a freer society. So merely stopping that growth of governance is, is uh, a huge win for us, and uh, we should look at the data, and if, uh, if we're at that point, then we should definitely promote it. I've got a question about the way the New Hampshire government functions and if that was taken into consideration pre-vote. And what I'm talking about specifically is at the state level. You hear stories a lot of times in other states where this really good bill uh, would have you know, repealed a regulation or you know, something along those lines, given more freedom, died in committee because the committee chair never brought it up for a hearing, or it passed committee but it never came for a vote on the floor of the House or the Senate. But here in New Hampshire, every bill has to have a hearing in committee, and every bill that gets voted on with either a uh, ought to pass or inexpedient to legislate goes to the full House. The only thing that doesn't go to the full House is if the committee says, we want to keep this in committee so we can look at it later and maybe bring it up next year. So was that looked at, and how does that actual function compared to the other nine states that were up for consideration, and I guess this is for Jason. So I'll try to restate the question, uh, hopefully, and that is to maybe to, one ex to what extent was the technical or procedural function of the state government analyzed pre-state vote to compare New Hampshire's operation with the other nine states, and specifically in terms of how bills are handled and that is, do they uh, more readily come out of committee and get to a, a floor vote uh, compared to other states where they might uh, be able to squash the bill in committee due to some chair or something like that just deciding not to hold the vote? To what extent was that reviewed and, and discussed prior to the state vote? Uh, good question. And um, so I will say that the fact that party leadership in the New Hampshire legislature is weak. That was definitely a consideration. The fact that legislators can vote their conscience was important. Also important was the fact that there are so many of them 
that state house districts are small, it's easy to get elected, it's easy to have influence on your legislator, uh, they're very accountable uh, to the electorate. The fact that we have an executive council that provides an additional check on government spending, uh, the fact that we don't really have a professional political class because legislators aren't paid anything really. Uh, that all of those factors were important ones in the choice of New Hampshire. So yeah, uh, we did we did talk about that. I would say probably the the aspects of the legislature that you point to, Daryl, were underrated when we were considering the state, um, but they definitely came up in the discussion. Uh, I've never had a chance to go to Pork Fest, but I've noticed uh, I've watched hours and hours of lectures. And I've noticed that the Free State Project has a tremendous connection with the scholars at the Ludwig von Mises Institute. And I'm wondering if there are any plans for maybe bringing some of those great people either to Dartmouth College or to Keene State College just simply to present these ideas of free markets and individual liberty. So, uh, so the question was, um, and you haven't been to Porkfest, but you've seen videos, and there's Mises scholars that come and speak at Porkfest, also at Liberty Forum. And uh, is there any plan to bring them to New Hampshire outside of a Free State Project event, maybe to Dartmouth or, or any of the other colleges, Keene State, et cetera, et cetera, to uh, present those ideas? Uh, yeah, I mean, we just need uh, we need the the resources, the financial resources. And at, at Dartmouth, I try to do that. We have good resources with this project I'm involved in there. It's funded by alumni, and um, so for instance, this term we're having a debate on the minimum wage. We're bringing in Don Boudreau as the kind of pro free market side. He's from the Mercatus Center. Um, last year we had Jerry Gauss, who's a libertarian political philosopher at Arizona. Um, we had, uh, we've had Greg Mankiw up uh, at Harvard, um, also pretty libertarian. Uh, who's the guy? Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Kaplan from University of Chicago on, uh, on executive pay. He's a very free market guy. So, uh, so yeah, we have been bringing free market up. We actually haven't had anyone that I know of from the Mises Institute, but this is um, I'd like to see what comes of this uh, this program because it's uh, maybe Walter Block. It's just oh yeah, that would that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> he would be the best. Yeah, that, that would be a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. I don't I don't think he's been Walter Block has been at Pork Fest or Liberty Forum, has he? I don't think so. No, no, no. Yeah. That would be one to add. We've had others, too. obviously. David Friedman, even Milton's son. Yeah, oh, yeah. David's spoken two or three times, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any others? We're, uh, we're not short on time, but we want to make sure we get all the questions from anybody that, if you want to throw rotten tomatoes, um, <laughs> but, you know, just, we're supposed to clean the room up after we're done, so. Any other questions? Garrett? As much as uh, the drive of the Free State Project idea seemed to be that libertarian ideas would get more attraction if there were people in one state, um, is there any sense at which either of you have seen it be not so much like a detriment, but maybe um, slow progress elsewhere that uh, people are refocusing their efforts in New Hampshire? Or uh, is there maybe like a, is there perhaps more of a connection that needs to be made with liberty movements around the country to, to grow those so New Hampshire would have fresh resources? So does the Free State Project bringing people to New Hampshire, I hope I'm understanding the question correctly, does that slow progress elsewhere? Um, and or do we, and I don't know who we is, but do we, the, the, the nebulous we, want to try to help grow outside of New Hampshire liberty organizations to help cultivate and provide resources to New Hampshire? Is that kind of the question? Sure. Okay. Um, go ahead. Um, I, mean, I think there has been good progress elsewhere, too. I mean, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, Alaska legalizing marijuana. Um, that's, that's been good progress. Uh, what's interesting is that in New Hampshire, over 60% of the electorate supports legalizing marijuana, which I believe is the highest of any state. It's definitely higher than Colorado, which <laughs> was higher than Washington. Uh, so, um, but yet we haven't been able to get it done because of our politicians. Um, no so, permit concealed carry would be another one where a lot of other yeah. states have done it and we've somehow not. Yeah. Vermont, right across the 
Vermont's had it for a long time in Alaska, but there's also been others more recently. Uh, Arizona and is it Kansas? Kansas, Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Maine. Yeah, yeah. So several other states have done that. So that actually hasn't slowed down. In fact, Real ID actually was uh, opposition to Real ID. In other words, uh, prohibiting participation actually happened in other states before it happened in New Hampshire. New Hampshire wasn't really leader, but what happened is several other states copy and pasted the bill and got it through their legislatures before we were successful. Sometimes what happens, this is an interesting trend, is that, is that New Hampshire will lead or be an early adopter in an idea or promoting an idea, but not be the first to implement it. New Hampshire legislature tends to be a little bit slow on implementation, and that may be a, a good thing in one respect, and that is that they're also slower to implement bad things. <laughs> we have lots of checks and balances. Yeah. But yeah, we can learn from other, other places, and I think, um, I mean, for one, for one thing, we want to recruit from all, those, <laughs> all yeah. those people that are working on these issues in other states and say, hey, uh, we like what you're doing there, but long term, all the action is happening here, so why don't you come join us and share what you, you know. Darrell? This is a question specifically for Jason as the creator, if you will, of the Free State Project. If you could change one thing about the implementation, what would it be and why? If you could change one thing about the implementation, go back in time to having created it but do it a little differently, what would be the one change? Um, I would have uh, had the state vote uh, at like 15 or 16,000 so that we'd have all that media attention and we'd get all those signers much more quickly. Have the state vote earlier, that's a good question. Later, yeah. Are there any other, there's still at least one or two non-free staters in the room. I'm hoping that they would have questions. Are there any others? Happy to answer anyone's questions, but. Thank you. Anybody else before we wrap up? Go ahead. Can we talk about more of the things that free staters